What would you do if you heard a noise in the middle of the night, only to look out your window, to see what appears to be a small man destroying your lawn, your garden, perhaps your car, even killing your pet? What would you think? What would you do? Who would you call? Would you call the police? And tell them there's a little bearded man terrorizing you? Everyone would think you were crazy. That's probably why we don't hear about gnomes as much as we should. Who would believe us? If we said a lawn gnome killed the cat. To most of us, gnomes are just a statue we put in our garden. The protectors of our yards, standing there with a smile on their face, with their long white beards and pointy red hats. They always make me laugh when I see them, bring a smile to my face and remind me about when I was a kid and would watch the cartoon on TV about the cheerful gnomes that would help the animals of the forest protect it from man, even help the trolls that would plague them with their tricks. They would always find the good in everyone and everything. But most of all, I remember how happy they were, always smiling, loving. That's why it's hard for me to believe a gnome could be evil, or hard to believe a gnome would terrorize a family. There are gnomes out there that want nothing more than to terrorize man. I'm not sure if they want to kill you, or just play their tricks. It seems in most cases, where people describe what seems to be a gnome, they just want you to go away, leave them alone, let them rest in peace. A peace that is getting harder to find, as wild places are disappearing, abandoned buildings are being torn down, as man continues to develop the world. What do these creatures do when they have nowhere else to go? And if they can't live a happy life, why should you? Gnomes generally are kind-hearted creatures, though most are reclusive and stay hidden underground or in the deep forests away from man. It is even said that some hide vast amount of treasure in caverns in the earth. And then there are the few that act harmful to humans, even some that kill. That brings us to the redcaps. Redcaps come from English folklore. They are said to be murderous creatures. They were found in the ruins of abandoned castles. They would murder anyone who dare enter their homes. Described as looking like an old man with red eyes and large teeth, long fingernails, and their red pointy hats. That brings us to their name, the Red Cap. They get it from the practice of dyeing those hats with the blood of their victims. It seems what people are describing as a gnome could actually and more likely be a redcap that is terrorizing them and their families. He lives along the Thule River, probably sleeping in some abandoned shed. Many families report having encounters with him. This encounter along the Thule River is among the more popular ones. A woman by the name of Tammy and her family moved into an old farmhouse. Along with the farmhouse was an old, rickety shed that they did not use. On the property were gardens, room for the kids to play. They kept animals. Tammy did notice that a few of her ducks and chickens had gone missing. She thought maybe there was something in the shed, but she couldn't put her finger on what it was because no one would go near it. But she always had this feeling that something was watching her. 
One night, when she returned home from the store with her grandson, they were unloading the car, and out of the corner of her eye she saw it standing there. What looked like a raggedy old little man, gurgling something. She was terrified and grabbed her grandson and ran inside. They waited, but kept hearing whatever it was outside. She went to the curtain, opening it only to see the hat moving back and forth. Eventually, whatever it was went away, and she could only describe it as an evil gnome. Eventually, Tammy and her family moved away from the farmhouse because of the encounters with the gnome. She found out later after she moved that she wasn't the only one that lived at the house that knew about him. And she wasn't the only one along the Tully River that had encounters with him. People that live there say they see him eating fish out of their ponds, hear him in the night singing, see him moving ornaments around in their yards. Hopefully that's all he does. Is it really an evil gnome along the Tule River? Who knows? All I hope is whatever it is, that it can find its peace. If you ever come across an evil gnome or a red cap, the best thing you can do is go away. That's all you can do, because they're relentless. They won't stop. It could be the house. It could be something on the property. It could be the area, but it's theirs, and it always will be.